give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. It has been five and a half months and exactly 174 days since season number four of the JBL Cup series had its finale at Homestead Miami Speedway. Tonight we kick off season number five with a, with a bang and what will be a historic season for sure. It's going to be a great season five and all kicks off with the 23 veterans in the field for exhibition race it is the Power Clash at Daytona. What's up everyone, it's the boy on Racing 97 aka Nate the Safe Community and welcome to Daytona International Speedway for night number 4 of Speed Weeks and to officially kick off the JBL Cup Series season for season number 5 and in 2024. It's great to be back for the Cup Series once again and it's great to be uh, back with these Cup Series cars. It's been a little bit, 5.5 months but uh uh, all the pre uh, pre uh, preparation behind the scenes have been going pretty well and I am very much looking forward to what we have in store for this season. Of course we have new paint schemes, 2023 roster, um, a whole new schedule, but a couple of things stay the same and of course that is d kicking off the season with Daytona Speed Weeks. And I'm not alone for this, but I'm joined by the Team Penske team owner of Bronson Medic up here in the booth. And Bronson, welcome to Daytona and welcome to season number five. Thank you, Nathan. Hello, fans. Hello, Nathan. Hello, everybody watching. We are finally back. As Nathan said, a little over five and a half months later, and we are back at Daytona. And I I cannot I can't believe we're back and I can't wait to get the season started right here at Daytona where it's always started here at the Clash. It's bound to be an amazing season. Yeah, without a doubt. Of course we do the Clash a little bit of a simpler manner than what it is in real life. Um just got all the veterans, twenty three veterans in the field, and then of course we have thirteen rookies that we will see the next couple of days during Daytona five hundred uh qualifying. But uh, most of the things are the same. We do have a little bit of a new schedule with some tracks returning and new tracks on the schedule. But as far as Daytona, a lot of it is the same. But there's one key difference. This season we are doing weekly lanes. Obviously, a, a lot of these drivers and a lot of these teams have done the lanes so far. But I don't know how much that will really play into effect here tonight. How do you think the lanes will play into effect here this season for Season 5? especially for those that are in the discord which will definitely help out with the ratings you definitely need to be on top of them if you want your team and your drivers to stay competitive throughout the season now i was almost caught out by one of the ratings for the clash and that could have ruined my chances but i stayed on top of it and because of that hopefully my drivers were one run well and because hopefully everybody did them then we'll have a very competitive field yeah without a doubt um, if you miss a couple, it won't really matter at the start of the season, but if you do the rains more and more each week, then it will matter when the season gets down to punch time in the Season 5 chase. But uh, enough about the rains, let's go over these 23 drivers that are full-time this season in the Cup Series, and of course on pole is starting right really left off as the Season 4 champion of Dale Campbell in the number 47 machine. With Chase Harris as his, his team owner, and alongside is the number 34 of John Andrews with Benny Watson as the team owner. And then in row number 2, we got the uh, number 17, Logan Williams, who I believe won the All Star Race in season 4, and his team owner is Will Parrish. Row no um, and then alongside is the 31 of, of Jordan Edwards with Steve Collins as the owner. And then in row number 3, we have William Brock. In the 51, owner is Trey White. In the 70 of Y Walker with the owner of, of Elijah Leonard. Roll number uh, 4 is the 21 of Jordan Stout returning to this uh, 21 machine. And his team owner is W1 Payne. And uh, alongside is one of the teams I'm very much looking forward to, just on paper. Um, Eli Boyd, a five time uh, 
veteran, been in every season. He's in his 42 this season with uh, um, LT or Chris Jericho as his team owner. And then, of course, we got Lord Driver, uh, uh, Bronson, and the 22 Bradley Ream. And Bronson being the team owner. And then the 30 of Justin Zydell in the 38. And uh, Ben Watson being the team owner. Then the number two of Juan Garcia is back in the Cup Series once again. Of course, second driver for Bronson in this clash. And then we have the number seven of Ace Garcia. He's back. Uh, good to see Ace Garcia back in the field. And his owner is Caleb Rose. And then in roll, I lost count of what role this is. But uh, the number eight, we got Aaron Abel and the team owner of Reggie Folkman. And the number one. Of all miles and the team owner is Ryan Little. And then speaking of Ryan Little, he's his other car, Noah Clifton in number 99. And uh, he is Caleb Lowe's second driver, Josh Williamson in the number 77. We got Travis Crampton in the number 45. The only trailer in the field and his team owner is Jack Koss. For him to be in the number 4. Uh, he's, his team owner is Bernardo Dio Fair. I... No, I butchered that, but it's what it is what it is. Uh, I will fix that. Um, the number 15 is Zachary Fitzwater, who's still yet to win on the channel. Hopefully, he gets a win in 2024, and his team is Trey White in the 15. And then the second leg team club machine is Joe Wachowski in the 43. The second college machine for Stephen Collin is Andy Miller in, in the 16. Second RCL club is the number 3. Of Eric Monaco, and then right at the 23 color field of veterans is Ryan Dwayne in the number 14. So I know that took a little bit, but I wanted to give a fair chance of everyone that is a veteran a, a little bit of a spotlight. And now all 23 drivers will get one off here at Daytona. And for once, 23 drivers, 16 laps, kicking off the number 5 here at Daytona. The veterans, who do you think will win the Power Clash? Well, every time that we come here to Daytona, which by the way, that was a very nice presentation that you did going down the grid, but every time that we come here to Daytona, we always see the chance of shuffling for positions. We always see the chance for three wide and potentially four wide situations. We want to try and avoid that. So to do that, the optimal line is to stay on the inside. If you get up on the middle or the outside, you just got to wait until you uh, cycle back to the inside. Drivers that I have in mind, that uh, combo of Legacy Motorsports, very, very, very interesting, and I think that that is a powerhouse. Talk about powerhouse. Joe Rakowski, driver still to prove himself. He got a clutch win at Pocono last season to make his way into the chase. Absolutely brilliant performance to win at his hometown, and Eli Bright, one of, if not the most experienced driver here on the grid. He's still got a le lot left to prove, and he does not seem to be running out of steam anytime soon. I, w I would love to see those two absolutely duke it out here this season but for now we gotta start for the clash those are my thoughts nathan i don't even know if i gave you an answer but those are just my overall thoughts coming into this race this is going to be fantastic of course this is not for points and it's only a nine points victory but we've seen some wild stuff here at daytona and i'm sure we will see that happen again a lot of great drivers here in the field a lot of great veterans a lot of great team owners to, to a lot of different things but at the end of the day, some things stay the same, and we kick off the season as we always have with the Power Clash defending Season 4 champion Dale Campbell with Elias the Green alongside Johnny on his wheel back in Season number 5 with Green Flag Racing at Daytona for the Power Clash. Welcome to Season 5 of, uh, of the JBL Cup Series. Gonna take a lap or two to get these cars warmed up and up to speed, but it will be the defending champion there, Camel leading lap number one in the Pilot Clash. 16 laps on top here tonight, and he will lead lap number one. 
And they all wait a little bit through life throughout the middle of the field. It didn't take Bradley Ream much time to get to the inside, make it three wide on the, the 21 there of Jordan Stout. He's stuck up in the middle, and behind him is the eight car of um, Aaron Abel. And that middle is starting to form as well as that outside. They have a bunch of big names there. Up, stuck up on that outside, the 38 there, going very wide. That's Justin Zydell. He's got to make sure not to make it a four-wide situation. That's how common four-wide situations are made. There goes Logan Williams in the 17. Last time we came here to Daytona, he won. So you definitely want him to push you here. He knows how to get it done. He goes to the top side, but still leading is Derek Hamill in the 47. Yeah, I almost forgot about that. Logan did win the uh, Power 4 the last time we were here at Daytona, so not a bad uh, driver right there in the 17 here at Daytona, but the, uh, Dale Hamill is still up front to the first two laps, but a pair of fours right behind Dale Hamill trying to work together here. That's, that's almost four wide in the back of the field with Animal and Noah uh -oh. Clifton and Ace oh, Garcia. There, there they go. They all fly apart coming out of turn number four, coming into the trial. Vol Caution will come out. Brandon Beal goes for a big slide on the infield. He keeps it going, but we have our first caution on lap number four here at Daytona. Unfortunately, that's going to have all miles involved. Noah Clifton, I think, might have been involved. Tough for brief for track house. Brandon Beal with a little slide. Josh Williamson, Dale Camel. Or not Dale Camel, uh, Potentially in the middle. Not not too many cars were involved, luckily, but uh, very unfortunate to have that happen very, very early on, on lap number four of the crash. But uh, luckily, not too many cars were involved. Hamill will uh, lead the field to the green flag. Uh, when do we go back racing? But a dominant uh, one from the season four champion of Hamill so far. And there's the pace cars. Finally, can catch up with the leaders here. But a wild start there, 2, 3, and 4 wide off the box. And some teams are not going to have a fun night here at Daytona, unfortunately. And I think a couple of those might be Spire and Trackhouse. Yeah, and for those up front, they were very fortunate that that crash happened in the back where there, there wasn't a lot of commotion going on. But still, that 4 wide, 3 wide situation in the back wasn't pretty for those who got involved. You can see the skid marks going all out of turn number four in the end of the tri -oval. And nobody's going to make a pit stop, I think, except for those who got damaged. But I think even those, they stay out. Mm -hmm. But Derek Hamill leads. And the pace car needed to catch up there. Step on it, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pace car had to step on him a little bit, but he did eventually catch up. I know, that, I know that camera he's got... I know that camera has got some horsepower. Yeah, I think it does. Um, But yeah, no one... Came down pit road, uh, so not too much damage for um, everyone. Before we get back to the restart, as lights are all the way out on the base car, let's go ahead and see what happened to bring out the first caution of season 5 here for the Power League Clash. Here we go, the first caution of season number 5, and unfortunately, Trackhouse is involved with both of the 1 and the 99. Wind Wind to the inside of Andrew Miller, Pete to the inside, and this is a common theme at Daytona 4 wide. Fairly, rarely works out well, and unfortunately, it does not here on lap number three coming to lap number four. Miller and Clifton make co slight contact and off of turn number four. Around they will go into that side wall, and unfortunately, Ace Garcia with nowhere to go in the number seven because of this. Kind of pinch into that side wall, and there they go around the one. Clips the three of Marco, and that sends what, um, that sends on Miles spinning. Then right there, Brian Beal with a little bit of contact, and he's actually gonna do a wicked of slide right there sideways for the number four. And honestly, not too, too much damage for most of these drivers with Beal, Miller, uh, Clifton, Garcia, Miles. That they, they have minimal damage, so not too bad. And uh, Josh Williamson with a good luck of bonus to avoid it in that 77 machine. A mild crash to kick off the season, but a terrible crash for Trackhouse with both cars with some minor damage. Going into turn three, let's take a closer look there at that 14 of Ryan Durrani. Fun name to say there. He pinches it four wide there, shoves everybody up wide. The 16, nowhere to go. 
gets up into the 99 and the 7, nowhere to go as well. And for, as Nathan said, for most of these guys, it was just a simple spin. But for the 7 and, for the better part, the 16 and the 1, some minor damage that will probably take them out of contention here for the Season 5 Clash. Yeah, I'm gonna wait and see how much damage that is really gonna affect them he was, uh, with the draft. But uh, Hamill has led every lap so far, and let's go ahead and get back to the restart here for the Season 5 Power Clash. Welcome back to Daytona. And we will go back green on that number 6 of 16. Of course, at Daytona and Talladega, we will have, I believe, a two-lap caution period to save as many laps as possible. And with that, no pit stop. So, going to quickly get back into racing here for the clash. And it will be Dale Hamill, Logan Williams, John Andrews, William Blot, and John Edwards, the top five. And then, uh, I'm a couple of low drivers there, Bradley Ream, Ryan Walker, and... I want to go see it in, in the 2 and 22. And then Jordan Stallion in the 21 and, and Eli Boy in the 42. Rounds out of the top 10. Everyone is still rolling uh, with the 23 car field. And it's going to have to be interesting to see if how the 199, 4, 7, and the 16 are on the restart with the slight damage. But uh, it will be the defending champion of Dale Camel bringing us back to the restart. You're at Daytona on lap number 6 of 16, a wild start to, to the clash, and I have to see if how the single final restart uh, goes down off of turn number 4. Something to note is that these drivers here at Talladega and Daytona, they tend to immediately, at the jump of the green flight, they decide whether to go outside or inside, so that's definitely going to be interesting to see here on this restart, to see who goes outside, who goes inside. I think best bet is to just stay inside. We don't want to see any more crashes for the rest of this. Coming to the restart zone, Flagman has the green flag in hand, and Derek Hamill oh. gets an amazing jump, and we are green flag racing once again. The 34 peaks to the inside, but Williams says, no way, Jose. We are staying single file, but here comes the 34 once again. John Andrews to the inside of Logan Williams, and we'll have our first side-by-side -side battle. But Derek Hamill, an immaculate start, heading onto the backstretch. Do not want to have that big of a lead here at Daytona, and it's going to be fine for the first lap. But here we go. The pat starting to get one back up. Double file. Hamill's eventually going to get caught by John Andrews here in the, in the 34. Here comes Jordan Edwards in the 31, Y Walker in the 78, and, and maybe like Boy in the 42, and here we go, John Andrews with a big speed boost. He's not gonna leave this lap, oh, does he? He does, barely. William Brock makes a three wide move for fourth place, I believe that is. John Andrews goes to the lead, and Derek Hamill is shuffled to the outside. The leader, all of this race, is now up on that outside. Logan Williams pushing him, and the Penske duo behind them, and now we have a oh, race Eli. 32, looks Eli. to the inside, no, 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 Eli no. Bright looks to the inside, four wide going into turn three, is it going to be the same result as we saw earlier in the race, they're getting tight, real tight, they get back sorted three oh. wide, and we just saved ourselves from another four wide catastrophe. Well, this is the clash, no points on the line, no Daytona 500 Crown Jewel on the line. They just want to get a win a fresh off of the offseason. And that was almost close right there. Four wide Eli Boy about gave us a heart attack right there. But side by side for the race three between John Andrews and Jordan Edwards. And now this is going to be um, interesting because the way that this version is at Daytona is totally different than Talladega where it is a cycle race. It is a multi-cycle racetrack. But sometimes if there's enough momentum on the inside lane, that's where you want to be. Sometimes this outside lane is where you want to be. And right now, the outside lane does have two forwards of John Andrews and a million block. And that is working out fantastic for those two as we're halfway through the power clash. The real question is, does John Andrews really want to block both lanes? Because eventually he has to pick one. The 40, or the, uh... The 78, rather, is getting very impatient, pushing that 31. John Andrews is going to settle for the outside. I don't think that was the right decision, but here, they're, here they go anyway. The 31 now to the inside. Is the four, is the 34 going to have enough momentum oh. to clear? No, he's not. And the 31 gets to his inside, and now we have side-by-side -side for the lead. Here we go. Chevy's on the inside. Four's on the outside. And it will be Andrews lean lap number nine. But we are side by side throughout this entire pet. I would like to mention that 
A couple of cars are off the pace, but I don't think we will have enough time to catch up with them with it only being 7 laps to go in the power clash. Side by side, we've got the entire lead pet, and it's Andrews and Edwards, the top two. And I think these guys might be running out of time, and they know it only sits to go out the line. They have to make moves here now, here in the power clash. And Edwards and Andrews, the top two, with Brock and Walker behind. Thought Bright on the back stretch was going to make a move, but he stayed patient. He was going to sit behind Wyatt Walker for another lap. Are they going to get enough momentum built? Coming with four to five laps to go here. Still side by side for the lead. We see the lone Toyota there of Travis Crampton all the way in the back of this pack. Still trying to find momentum, trying to find his lane, trying to find his partner, but yet cannot. Side by side. Wyatt Walker trying to find that hole, trying to find that momentum. Is he going to dive? The 21 tries to find his inside to the 42 of Eli Bright. Nothing there. Three wide for that position and that mangle of cars. But yet still side by side. And the 43 of Rakowski almost gets up into the 15 there for a brief second. And this is the outcome of what... Uh, this is the res a result of that crash. Because... That crash, it, I guess it did enough damage to the cars that were involved because we only have 16 cars in this lead pack and it's definitely making it a little bit more difficult to get each lane to work as it's pretty even between the outside and the, the inside lane but Wyatt Walker is starting to get a little bit impatient in that 78 machine for live fast and most sports but th this outside lane with Brock pushing Andrews is looking really, really good but Wachowski's going to try to get inside of Jordan Stout, I think Lukowski wants to help his teammate Bright in, in that 42, but he cannot get past Jordan Stout. Four laps to go in the power clash. Can Andrews hang on to get the race victory? And, um... Edwards was clear there. He's actually clear right now. Was for a split second, but now isn't anymore. But he was clear in turn three and four. He could have gone to the inside, but didn't. He stayed up to the outside, so he must have some sort of trust in William Brock. The 78 makes the move to the inside with massive help from Eli Bright. The 31 is going to get shuffled to the middle lane. And now that opens the race wide open for any of these racers going into turn three and four. Oh no, someone has a problem. Uh, it looks oh! like it's the two of Juan Garcia with a tire going down. I'm so sorry about that, uh, Bronson. And that shook up the entire inside lane's momentum. As I thought, the 31, and especially the 78 of Wai Waka was going to have something for the way that she might steal. But Andrews, uh, not Andrews, Edwards is now pushing the 78. But he's not going to want that either, as Boy is going to push Andrews. Well, not Andrews, Edwards. To the inside here. And Edwards saw what Brock did the lap before, and he said, No, I'm going to do the same exact thing. Three wide for P2. And here comes the 31 with a massive head of steam with help from Eli Bright, not afraid to make moves. Two laps ago, coming back to the line. These two, uh, I will say for my NASCAR Heat five days, know a little bit of something about me. Some big money or big bunny moves here on super speedways and they are trying to do something here. Look at Wachowski, look at Eli Bright, Lexi Mo Club, and Travis Crampton on the inside. Two laps to go and all of a sudden things have changed as- hey, There's a lap Oh car. boy, Juan no. Garcia. He came back out with a tire going down and that's going to change everything here. Come here the white flag at Daytona for the power clash. Here comes Lexi Mo Club. And look at that hole inside, that's Legacy Motorsport cars, but he's going to get blocked by the, the slow car, he might, yes, the inside line's blocked, and the 31 takes the white flag, Jordan Andrews, with a big head of steam, and he clears himself from any pack, and now Legacy thought they had it in the bag, and was quickly dashed. Here we go, final lap in the clash, Edwards has a massive leap, but I don't think he wants that, so here comes Andrews, Block, oh. and Hamill. Oh, he didn't block it! The 31 didn't block it, and here comes the 34, the leader for such a large amount of time of the race, and the 51 is going to push the 34 past the 31, and off a turn number four, Nathan. Well, a crazy power clash, and the guy that dominated is going to win, John Andrews and Bane Watson for front row most was for kickoff season number five, with a bang in the power clash. What a race, block and second. Hamill, the defending champion, will get third. 
what a comeback from Hamill. He dropped like a rock, getting up on that outside. Wasn't seen from until the very last lap. Almost had it, and I bet if there was another lap, he would have won this race. Amazing race. Amazing, amazing stuff. If only we'll call in the number two of Juan Garcia did not have a tire come, uh, uh, go down and came up right in front of the leaders. I think Legacy Mall Club could have had something with the 42 and the 43 of Wachowski and Bright, but uh, really wild, wild crash. One caution early on. Kind of calm early um, after the restart, but it got wild at the end, and Andrews gets the win here at Daytona. What a crash, and he's going to do a victory lap with his uh, four teammate behind him, who kind of helped him for most of this race, was Brock and uh, Andrews. So a great job from them. And what a clash here at Daytona. What a clash and what a way to open up the season. We saw almost everything that Daytona could deliver. We saw the crash that was in the clash earlier in the race. We saw the dramatic finish with lap cars getting involved as we feared would happen. And then we saw a brilliant finish getting pushed all the way to the line. Don Andrews is your season five clash winner. And a job well done from that 34 machine. And got to wait and see if that 34 uh, front row motorsports can keep up that momentum going into Daytona 500 qualifying tomorrow and Saturday, and then eventually the duels, and eventually into the Daytona 500. Block and second, great one for Brick Bear Racing. Hamill and third, Bright and fourth. Heartbreak for basically fourth. 5th and 6th, because I thought those three could have had a really in um, interesting shot late if Juan Garcia did not get in the way. Um, Boyd, Edwards, and Wachowski, 4th, 5th, and 6th. Walker in 7th, Stout in 8th. How about the Lone Toilet in 9th of Twilight Squamp gets the top 10. And then Logan Williams lines out the top 10 and P number 10. And you see the rest of the finishing order right there. A lot of cars fell off the pace with the damage from the first crash and uh, a wild crash. What's the final thoughts here as we kick off season 5 with the Bane and the Powerade Clash? I think this race actually showed a lot to what the 500 can offer when that eventually comes here for us to commentate which is going to be a fantastic event to watch, a fantastic event to immerse yourself in and I I, I, for one, cannot wait for this 500. We saw teammates working together. We saw the dramatic four wide moves that worked, that didn't work. I think the drivers are going to look at that and take that for the 500 and put it towards, hopefully, going towards the Daytona 500 victory. I think that this was, uh, I think that this race showed a lot of what the 500 can and hopefully will produce. Yeah, without a doubt, the 500 has always been wild. Been one of the most chaotic races on the channel, and we have to wait and see what happens because with these rains being in play early on, it's not really affecting things too much. But we we'll have to wait and see what happens over the course of Speed Week. What a week it has been so far. We crowned some champions in the, the Alpha Series the last few days, the Clash tonight, and of course, tomorrow is a double here at Daytona because we got. They won group qualifying for the JBL Cup Series Daytona 500 and we got the Subway Cup Series Speed Energy Duels and it's going to be a fun couple of weeks on the channel and we are just getting started for Speed Race. Huge thanks for Bronson for joining me up, up here in the booth. Like he says, uh, we will be back together. He will be back in the booth with me for the 500 in a, about a week or so and uh, until tomorrow for Daytona 500 qualifying day number one. Congratulations to John Anders, uh, John Anders on the race victory in the Power Clash. Bye. Bye bye.